Hey there, and welcome to the cafe. So I'm really in love with collage artwork, and I love doing it, but collage isn't just for paper. I thought it would be fun to translate collage into a painted finish on the jelly plate. So using leaves and various textures, I played around and came up with a few examples that I'd like to share with you. Now you can get extremely bold and graphic like I did here with these very contrasting colors. I used burnt umber and vintage white for this section here. And then you can also get really subtle prints as well using, oh, get in frame. There we go. Uh, this is using a color called Silver Marlin. It's a folk art blue and the vintage white. And it gave me a very subtle leaf print. And then I've got all of these textures. All I used on this piece was bubble wrap and corrugated cardboard. And that's what we'll be using today. I thought that would be a fun, easy to manage little combination of textures. Now, of course, the sky is the limit with this technique. You can get really wild with a lot of different textures and you can also get some amazing prints with just a few materials. I tend to like to do this because I can get way out there with a whole lot of materials and um, kind of get lost in the process. So here's another one that's similar and this leaf print is much more subtle than the last leaf print. The corrugated cardboard over here is very bold and graphic and down here and you want to watch that and kind of guard against it because the leaf is my main focal point but this is taking precedence over it because it's just easier to see. So you want to keep these kinds of things in mind. The more contrasting colors you use of course the more your textures are going to show up. Here's a fun one with all different kinds of stuff in it. Now this one I really enjoyed doing and I have a honeycomb trivet that I used on this one to get this texture here and I use it in quite a bit of my artwork and it's just a fun little trivet I got at Hobby Lobby in the uh, spring shop section. So you can find textures literally anywhere. If you program yourself to look for different textures, you'll find them everywhere you look. It's so amazing. Now this one, I did not get enough paint down initially to pick up all the details of this leaf. So I kind of paid for it as you can see with not a lot of detail down the center. I still think that this is a gorgeous print. I love these colors. This is um, this is golden nickel azo quinacridone nickel azo gold and then I've got that silver marlin color again. Let me grab it. This is what it looks like, folk art, silver marlin. So I've got this, this, and of course the folk art matte vintage white for my final pull. And look at all the amazing variation I got just out of a few colors. And we're gonna do that today. We're just gonna use three colors today because you can get such amazing results. Now, of course, this is a jumping off place. Now, this one was made with the Folk Art Silver Marlin the, and uh, Folk Art Burnt Umber and then the Folk Art Matte Vintage White as well. So you can really go wild with your colors. I tend to stick to three because it just seems to work best for me. It keeps me focused in on getting the finishes that I have in mind. And um, I can 
can get really out of control if I give myself too many colors or too many textures. So, um, but you can, this really is the jumping off place for you. Sky is the limit. You can really take this in so many different directions. Now this one I did three leaf prints and then this part of the print I just used um, rather than use any texture plates or stencils I went ahead and did the urban grunge texture technique on the background of this one and if you haven't seen that video it's a really fun video that teaches how I do this little technique in the background here and I will go ahead and link that below now here's a really bold and graphic example of this style that you can do. This is still only, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four colors here, but there's a lot going on here. I've got a couple leaf prints. This one, the colors were too close to pick up any real detail. And then this one down here had a lot more contrast. So the light, you doing light leaf prints is really magical and I invite you to play around with that little idea and then this is this is um, Windsor and Newton yellow ochre folk art burnt umber uh, Nicolazo the quinacridone Nicolazo gold from golden and then I did the pickup with my matte vintage white from folk art again and we've got the trivet here some corrugated cardboard leaves a piece of shelf liner a lettered a text stencil and some bubble wrap so you can really make these uh, very blatant if you're looking for that bold and graphic look so let's go into the materials and colors we're going to be using today and let's get into this now this is a quite an easy little thing to do so what i've got is my cool little um uh, furniture skid tool that I saw on Facebook with the knob pole super glued to it for uh, this is for your jelly plate great tool and then a couple of brayers and then today I just pulled a piece of shelf liner a piece of bubble wrap and a piece of corrugated cardboard it, it really is important for me to not get too outlandish with too many tools because then i end up with muddled results and here of course you want to have some leaves i got i went and picked up some more leaf sprigs i had to go down to the city over the weekend so i was able to pick up a few more leaf sprigs everything's turning getting ready to turn so i felt lucky to pick some up while there was still a bit of time and of course i like to use runoff sheets and paper towels sometimes i get way too much paint i try not to but it does happen so I like to have some paper towels handy now I'm using my little six by six inch jelly plate today as my palette I love to use a jelly plate as a palette as you know and then I wanted to show you something I made all those prints with my 8x10 jelly plate and I was going to use this today but this is so old and so used this plate that it got stained and it's actually clean this plate is actually clean believe it or not but um, it's stained so dark that I'm going to go ahead and use my 9x12 inch plate just so that you can see better what's going on. I like to use the 8x10 plate because then I can get the entire image on my 8.5 by 11 inch printer paper. Now that does bring me to paper and I am just using basic printer paper for this finish because it's it pulls easy, it's reliable, and I like to use what I know works. I did have a question about doing, um, doing the leaf prints with tissue paper and I would suggest experimenting for sure and if I find 
find the time this fall, I will do some experimenting myself. I have a lot in front of it, but my only concern is the more layers you get on your plate, um, you kind of need a strong paper to pull them. But that's just a theory. That's just an educated guess. It, tissue paper could work amazing, amazingly well. Also, there are different strengths of tissue paper on the market. And we all know that rice paper is much thinner than uh, a lot of papers. And it's also much stronger than tissue paper. So there's another option. Um, calligraphy paper would work beautifully. I have some of that. I will be doing some jelly plate videos with different papers just to play around and experiment. But for today, we're just gonna go ahead and stick with what I know works, with, which is just your basic cheapo printer paper. So let's go ahead and go over the colors real quick. I love this Windsor and Newton yellow ochre. This is acrylic. I love this color, and I especially love it with this folk art asphaltum. That is the weirdest name to me for a uh, paint color, but that's what what it is it's asphalt with a um at the end <laughs> very bizarre not sure why they named it that but it's absolutely one of my all-time favorite folk art colors and then i'm going to go ahead and do this pull with the folk art matte vintage white i love to use this color it's very reliable it provides like in this print right here it provides a ton of contrast which you i really want the leaf prints at all the texture to show up today so that's another reason why I chose this palette so what we want to start with is this is kind of a color blocking technique I'm gonna start off by putting let me get everything situated here I'm gonna start off by putting this asphaltum color on my little palette and I want to I have both of those brayers because I really want to be able to control the size of my color blocking. I'm going to go ahead and use my larger brayer now and I want to pick my leaf first. I always forget to do this so it's a good idea for you to handle this with care. I think we'll use this one. It fits well and that's how big it is. So this color block section is going to have to be quite large and you want this pretty thick. So you can just put your color right on the plate. Now something else I want to focus on is I really want this block to be a rectangle. So I'm gonna pay close attention to kind of getting, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna pay attention to getting this. Now my eight by 10 plate works beautifully for this technique, but I really wanted you to see everything. And since I'm using eight and a half by 11 inch paper, I really wanna to try to keep everything in the borders a little bit more because you wanna be able to see it. Now, here's a little trick that I wanna share with you. Here's just a runoff sheet. I wanna keep a lot of this color, but I want a really strong print. So I've got to get this down and you wanna work kind of fast. Do not um, give yourself an opportunity to let your paint dry under the leaf print or you won't get a good print. Now what I really need to do here is focus by using my fingers to push those veins. And of course you always wanna go vein side into the paint. And I'm not so much focusing on pushing down down hard on the surrounding color. I'm really wanting to get those, that veins, of course. You know what I'm trying to say. 
talking and working is not always my strong suit. So a lot of my color came off. Now you wanna be careful, just like in the last video, not to touch your leaf once you get it down. And then you end up with this gorgeous little print here and we will deal with that in a moment. Now what I want to do, I want to add some more of this asphaltum and I want more, I want a lot of control over this. So I want to put it on my little palette because it's going to give me an opportunity to smooth out this paint without disrupting my leaf. So once I get this all smoothed out, I just want to carefully come back in and add that color back into that rectangle so that I can have that beautiful collaged painted look in the end. This is really risky right here. So it is good to use a print that's already got uh, paint on the paper because if you use a piece of dry paper, it will literally pull up every bit of this paint. And even that one pulled up most of it. It really pulled up a lot of it. So now you've just got to take a moment to work this and play around with it. Oh, see, and it can really be dangerous. <laughs> and it's okay. It's okay. You just kind of, it's the nature of the beast of doing this that um, you want to just really focus on pushing on your uh, leaf leaf and not the background finish but it's impossible to do this perfectly so don't worry it takes a little practice there's a bit of a learning curve with this so now we've got that gorgeous color on there and i'm gonna clean up my little brayer here and what I wanna do now is I'd like to take a lighter. I'm not gonna use this to pull the actual leaf print and it might be too dry anyway. Let's go ahead and do it actually on second thought. But the thing about doing this is your leaf is opposite of this print. So it doesn't lay perfectly. There's our gorgeous print. We have to let that dry completely. So let's do one leaf at a time here. I'm just gonna focus on this one. I'm even gonna move it. Look, it came out pretty good. Then I'm gonna come in. Cause if you're not pushing on it, it's just sitting there. It's really not gonna print on you. So you have the freedom to do this. Now I'm making a hot mess of my hands because I had just ran over this with that extra paint. So it's definitely a little bit messier to do this. You can also set your leaf aside. I just have a very difficult time not pulling a leaf print when I can. So that's why I do this. And if you saw the, uh, the most recent leaf printing, um, on the jelly plate video I did. I think I called it leaf printing four ways. Um, I go over all of this really in depth. So I got a pretty good print there just doing one leaf at a time and the paint stayed wet enough for me to be able to get something workable. So this to me is a beautiful workable image for a piece of artwork. A lot of those can just be framed the way they are. Okay, so while I'm letting this dry, I'm gonna come in with this other color here, this uh, yellow ochre color. And I wanna add it to this other, let me get in frame. I just put a nice size blob, maybe a little too much. I'm not a big fan of this packaging because it's like a toothpaste tube and you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube kind of a situation is what you get going with that. So let's go ahead and, you know, that's what my runoff sheets are for. I like to have this stack over here and just keep working on them and filling them up until they're completely full. So if you get a little too much paint, it's fine. It's just your basic jelly printing stuff. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do this all the way across here. And then I'm gonna do one down here. 
And the nice thing about doing this is um, I am using three colors, so I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way over there too. Uh, you can let this dry and push your textures into that and your textures will still come out. I'm gonna go ahead and do all the way down this edge. This piece is gonna be a little bit more bold and graphic because I just really today wanna to convey the idea to you. Another thing you can do, I can move this real quick, is you can take this, of course, and just splat it on your sheet so that you can get more interest going on. And you can clean your uh, jelly plate, your little palette plate at the same time. There's some gorgeous grunge there that we just got. Plus it cleaned this off quite nicely. Now we have a bit of a cleaner plate, <laughs> kind of, sorta. Now another issue that I've got going on here is this little area here. So I'm just gonna come in with some of this wet paint and it's really faint and really light. And then I'm gonna throw a dot of this asphaltum color. Oh, look, I had something and it kind of messed it up, but that's okay. You want a grungy finish, so it's just fine. So I really just need the tiniest bit of this color here. but I want it thick enough that I, I really do kind of want some bold graphic texture in this piece. So we'll get that nice and thick enough to really lay down a block of color here. And of course, you know, you wanna take a, a few moments to think about your composition as you're doing this. Now, this yellow is not dry and it's, um, I keep running over it. So what's happening is, is it's pulling it up because it's not dry. If it wasn't dry, I wouldn't have that happening right at the top there, but that's okay with me too. Most of what happens in this kind of finish is I'm happy with it because it gives me that graphic, graphic look. So let's go ahead and take Take this shelf liner here and I'm going to gently lay that down and then take my small brayer and just run over that really hard and look at that graphic look I got plus I had some of that wet uh, asphaltum color on there so I was able to get a lot of that brown in there as well now I just want to do a tiny bit of this down here and this is what's nice about getting little things of texture like this that you can cut up and kind of fit to what you want. So now look at this is a little wet right here but this is mostly dry. I can still come in and get a subtle bit of this uh, oh, see, that's where it was wet. Now I'm gonna have a big chunk missing. That's fine with me. I want to stay away from the leaf itself, but this is getting pretty dry here, so it's not picking up. So it's kind of a fine line. You can let it get pretty dry, but not entirely. So I wanna do this whole little area here with the corrugated cardboard. Now I pushed really hard and picked up a lot, so let's push just lightly here. And you can see the difference. Now let's go over it again, because I've got that brown paint on there, and I was hoping to get some of that brown paint down, but it dried too fast. So we'll come in here and this is what you do. You just really block in your textures. That came out quite nice. We'll throw a little more right there and maybe a tad over here just to shake things up. And then I wanna go ahead and put, I wanna do the corrugated cardboard going the opposite way. I think this adds a lot of interest to do this to your pieces.
you can flip it around to a dry side and it really doesn't take much. Sometimes you have to push a little harder than others on your texture plates, depending on the results you're getting. Now that this is all textured and uh, ready to go, I have to let this dry completely, just like we always do. So I'm gonna go ahead and hurry this along with my heat tool and I'll be right back.
now that this is completely dry, I want to go ahead and use my vintage white and I want to carefully move my paint bottle as I'm distributing the paint. Now this again, same as any other jelly printing, you need a specific amount of paint. You need it to be thick enough to completely cover your plate of course, and thin enough to be able to pick up all the layers underneath. If it's too thick, you can't pick up the layers. And if it's too thin, you'll have white spots. So this is just one of those very tricky things that comes with practice. You get better the more you practice. So now I'm using eight and a half by 11 inch paper. I really want to make sure that I get this leaf and then I want a bunch of this texture all around it as well. So I'm going to lay that there and then I'm going to quickly grab a couple more uh, dry sheets because I really want to clean up these edges of this plate very well. Now this is where my handy dandy little uh, s furniture skid tool comes in. This gives me a chance to really run over that whole bottom sheet of paper plus get the edges cleaned up on my plate as well. Now printer paper is a tricky beast just like the jelly plate is a tricky beast, right? Uh, printer paper, you cannot leave it on too long or it will, oh look at how fun, those will go in the runoff pile to be filled up completely. Look at how fun. This is going to be great. Um, you can't leave this too long or it will begin to tear on you. Oh, and I'm having a little bit of tearing. And this is okay. It's giving it an older look. You just have to pull these prints fast. Now my plate's going to be a little dirty for the next pull, which is wonderful. We like that. And then here is our print. So I got a little too thin with the vintage white in a few spots. This is what happens when your paint's a little too thin. But you just take your little squirt bottle of coffee and I like to do it the way I was taught. Uh, I, Robin McClendon taught me this technique a long time ago to mass produce coffee staining. And she has since come up with you using a smaller bottle at her work table, but I like to stick some rubbing alcohol in here to keep your coffee from molding. So thank you to Robin for that little tidbit of wisdom. So now I'm just gonna come in and squirt this just to get rid of those stark white areas. And then another thing I like to do is this, this is really wet now. But that coffee instantly stains that paper. So I just want to come in with a paper towel and pick up all that extra coffee so that this will dry faster. And still a gorgeous print. And I'm kind of glad that happened because it goes to show that that's what happens when you have a little too thin of your pickup color. So as you saw, I went ahead and did another image on my little eight by 10 plate because I wanted to show you twice just so that you could really get it down. Now, a couple of things here that I want to talk about. We had to go over this with the coffee because um, I didn't get enough paint in certain areas. Now, something you can do that helps me a lot is to work on a smaller plate. When I work on a bigger plate, plate there it's harder for me to manage this technique now a big plate is really really nice for other things but for this technique it's definitely tougher to manage so I want to get my paper ready I did say a couple things but it was really only the one thing you know you want to have be able to manage it so we're going to get another opportunity to do the paint. Now I put just as much on this smaller plate as I did on the bigger one. And a, a, another quick word to the wise, I've got too much on my table here. 
um, better to have a little too much paint. Oh, just messed up my runoff sheet. Good job, Corey. It's better to have a little too much than not enough because you can always pull it off. So the last one I did just goes to show that I had a little, uh, I should have had a little bit more on. Now that is about perfect for this plate here. You want a nice consistent spread of your um, pull color. A couple things about the vintage white. One, it's a very light color, so it gives you the ultimate in contrast and really picks up all that detail. And another, the binders in it are just about right for um, being able to pick up all those layers underneath. Some of the golden paints look, and it doesn't take much to get that print. You can really pull these fast. Some of the golden paints have a lot of binders in them, um, almost too much for this technique. And what happens with your golden paints, if you, um, I guard against using it as my pickup color. And by pickup, of course, I mean the very last layer we just did. The reason I stay away from using golden is because when you're using a thinner paper like this printer paper or tissue paper, the binders are so strong in those golden paints that it tends to start tearing up your paper. But look at this beautiful graphic gorgeous collage print that we pulled off of our eight by 10. Much more manageable size to work with. Now I did notice that I didn't have enough paint on this leaf right here. I think it's still a very gorgeous print and it adds to the character of the overall piece, but that is what happened there. I had a nice consistency of paint here and my brayer must have been a little thin on paint. So you really want to make sure you have an even distribution of paint all the way around your brayer before you lay down your little sections. So that's what happened there. But I love it when little things like that happen when I'm making videos like this because then I get an opportunity to say, hey, this is how this happened, guard against it. Let's quickly go over the ones we got today. So we got this beauty here. And by the way, I just put my jelly plates on a couple pieces of poster board so that you can see but this plate is so stained you can't even see uh, oh well so there's that print here's the last one we did and you know these these areas are still blatant but that coffee just pushes it back just enough to give it that aged look and take away the starkness of the white of the page. So here's that one. And then again, I pushed, you don't have to push hard at all on the corrugated cardboard. And the shelf liner, when I ran over it, I ran over it pretty hard. So you'll get to know each one of your textures as you use them. Now here's a couple other bonuses we got from today we filled up some of our runoff sheets which I'm not going to show but um, that helps serve to get us some more grungy jelly prints but we got this beauty here that we can use and then we got a couple of little leaf prints here and then I cleaned off my little six by six jelly plate there. So that's a really nice chunk of collage fodder. All of these are great for a little collage page. So I like to utilize all the opportunities to get as many leaf prints as I can. But anyway, I hope you try this technique. It's really fun. It's a new different way of looking at collage with your jelly plate. It's a different way of being able to play with your jelly plate and I really enjoy it. So come on back and hang out with me and I'll see you very soon. Have a great day.